I dreamed about Lord Howe Island long before I knew it existed. Many people dream about tropical islands, but Lord Howe is one of only four island groups in the world awarded World Heritage Listing by UNESCO, which calls it a remarkable example of isolated oceanic islands born of volcanic activity more than one and a quarter miles or 2,000 meters under the sea. These islands boast a spectacular topography and are home to numerous endemic species, especially birds. Where is Lord Howe? I came from Washington, D.C. in July. Winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Boarding the Dash 8 32-seater in Sydney for the two-hour, 445-mile or 700-kilometer flight. Our pilot graciously circled the island, giving us a distant view of Ball's Pyramid, the world's largest rock stack. Coming low over the lagoon, we approach the short half-mile runway. When we flew in, we noticed the cows grazing at the end of the runway. Just beyond this grazing area lies the best surfing beach on the island, Blinkies. Of the 11 beaches on Lord Howe, you can't beat the secluded surrounds and jagged coastline of Middle Beach for a picnic or beachcombing. Ned's Beach is a marine reserve and one of the secret treasures. Put on a snorkel and mask, step into the water, and look down as colored grass, parrotfish, Trevally kingfish swarm around your ankles in anticipation of a feed. Every evening these fish are hand fed by one of the locals in an island tradition that dates back many years. Because they are trained to come to the shore, there is no fishing at Nets Beach. The grassy area behind the beach is the perfect place to bring your dog. On this day I met Peter Phillips and his four-year-old border collie, Fly. She showed us some of her tricks. High five, high five, high five, hey, high five, oh, kiss. Oh, you're such a good girl, aren't you? Is it time for your dinner? That's up there too, isn't it, dinner? <laughs> Sit. Sit down. Sit down. Lie down. Seeing Fly react at the mention of her dinner made us realize it was time for our dinner. So we headed to the Milky Way restaurant and had the freshest kingfish grilled. It is early morning on Lord Howe. A lone fisherman stands at the end of the wharf, a far cry from the bustle that occurs once every two weeks when the supply ship from the mainland comes in, bringing almost everything to the islanders, except the few perishables that are flown in. Activity on the island in July is at a low ebb. It's the off season. So we leapt at the opportunity to go snorkeling with Ken on the Coral Princess. The current was strong as we snorkeled in our wetsuits in the 62 degree or 17 degrees Celsius water. 
we didn't stray too far from the boat. The southernmost coral reef in the world is at Lord Howe. It is considered more pristine with healthier coral than the Great Barrier Reef, partly due to the 400 visitor limit on Lord Howe. The confluence of tropical waters from the East Australian current and the cooler waters of the Tasman Sea produce teeming marine life. On the way back, Ken took us by a number of fish viewing areas. Be right down there. See, it's right down. Oh yeah, that's a big one. It is a big one. Wow. The white on his back. Huge. Huge. Yeah. Now that's a stingy, right? It's a small one. Oh, is it? Yeah. Hmm. The biggest. The island's marine life includes over 500 fish species. One afternoon, we engaged the renowned island naturalist and author of a guide to World Heritage Lord Howe Island, Ian Hutton, for a trek to the base of Mount Lichbird to view the Providence petrels, one of the few birds that winter on Lord Howe. So what is the best month for birding? Probably March. You get the summer breeders still here and the winter breeders like these just come back. You see a lot of birds where you got a pair chasing each other, that's the important thing. So these birds are basically the uh, teenage ones doing some aerial disco dancing. I can look at the sky on Lord Howe for a very long time. The way the light plays in the clouds, watching the setting sun turn Mount Lichbird and then Mount Gower, pink for a few minutes, enjoying the reflection on the water as the sun sets behind North Bay. We savored that sunset with a gourmet meal at Humpty Mix Cafe, grilled trevally, a fresh garden salad, and a decadent dessert. It was our last morning on Lord Howe. We visited the War Memorial Overlook for that classic scene of the lagoon. When I dropped my rental car at Wilson's, Mr. Wilson had stepped out, but his dog was there, mildly interested before returning to his favorite chair for his morning nap. On our way to the airport with Hobbs, we stopped by again at Wilson's. Mr. Wilson was there, and I told him that that was the easiest car rental I ever had. And he said, no, it was the most trusting. And that about captures the ethos on Lord Howe. So